So you think you know Adobe Illustrator. Well, take no offense to this. I've been using Adobe Illustrator since 1987, 27 years. I started using it back when I was uh, almost 28 years old. I'm now 55, so do the math. I'm going to share with you techniques of using Adobe Illustrator and benefiting from the golden ratio. The golden ratio has been used by DaVinci, Pyramids. In fact, the distance between your uh, first finger and your knuckle wrist area is uh, the golden ratio. You'll find this in sunflowers and seashells. I'm going to share with you how to use the golden ratio to do web design using Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is going to be a great product to use for your web comps and design. You can then take that web comp, bring that into Dreamweaver as a tracing image, do all your CSS markup, and then take that exact markup and put it into an ultimatum theme WordPress. That's called working smart. These are the techniques that I share with you in my master class on thinklearnearn.guru. I will have a special offer for you that I highly suggest you take advantage of. So let's sit back, have a beverage, crack our knuckles, and get started by understanding how to use Illustrator the right way, my way, based on my 27 years technique, using Illustrator and working smart. Now, since we're working with Illustrator, I'm working with Illustrator CC, and I highly suggest you use the same techniques I use. This way you'll get through this very easily. Now, if you don't have Illustrator CC, pretty much everything I'll share with you on this video, free video tutorial, you can do in CS5, 5.5, and CS6. But if you want to be a serious user of web design, graphics, print production, Invest in the most current software. Don't waste time learning old software. It makes no sense. I'm going to make myself a new file, file new. And we'll just call this Golden Web Comp. Now, keep in mind, since we're working with web, we're working with pixels. If this is a print design document, we'd be working with points. Now, points and pixels are sort of the same, and here's how it works. There's 72 points in an inch. Technically, there's 72 pixels to an inch as well. I'm going to make a document for Responsive Design website that's 960 wide by 560 tall. That fits comfortably inside of a 13-inch monitor and mathematically goes down to an iPad 768 and an iPhone 360. 360 is a divisible of 9, 320 rather, is a divisible of 960. 320 times 3 is 960. So let's say okay to that. Okay, now if you know anything about how I teach and how I train, the first thing we're going to do, of course, is save our file. Let's save our file and just put this on our desktop in a folder called Golden Comp. Golden Comp. And we'll just call this Golden Comp. All right, now here's what I want to share with you. Work smart. What do I mean by that? Let's learn some basic Illustrator production techniques and shortcuts. So the first thing I always do when I start an Illustrator document is I hit the A key. What that's going to do is select the direct selection tool. No matter if you're an Illustrator or Photoshop, the A key selects the direct selection tool. Now, why am I concerned about being in that tool? Well, that's the most powerful tool of all because from this point forward, I can get to that tool simply by holding down the command key, Macintosh, control key for Windows. So as an example, say that I wanted to create a simple box. That's the M key, M for marquee. It's basically the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to create a simple rectangle here. Now, obviously, I can't see white on white. So here's a very simple way. I'm just going to switch white for black. Here's my fill. Here's my stroke. If I hit Shift X, I can exchange black for white. I'm only doing this for the purpose that you can see black at white. I can't see white on white. I can't see polar bear in a snowstorm. Now here's what I want to share with you. I'm in my rectangle creation tool. And the rectangle creation tool, of course, creates rectangles. It doesn't select rectangles. It doesn't edit rectangles. It simply creates rectangles. So many of you have probably experienced this. You're in the rectangle creation tool. You go to select something and boom, you get this dialog box. It drives you crazy, doesn't it? Well, it just shouldn't drive you crazy. You're telling the software that you want to create a rectangle, but you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Now, rather than every 5, 10, 15 seconds, Go up here to the direct selection tool. Here's a very cool production technique. I'm just going to change the color of this basically to red. I'm going to hold down the command key. And when I hold down the command key, it turns into a selection tool. As long as I hold down the command key Macintosh, 
or a control key windows, I can continue to select something. Let go, I'm right back in the rectangle tool. Hold on the command key, select. Let go, I'm right back in the rectangle tool. This works for any ANY, any tool. We'll go to the direct selection tool by holding down the command key. Now, why is it going to the direct selection tool? Because that's the tool I initialized when I started my document by hitting the A tool. Now, new in Adobe Illustrator 2014 CC, say that five times fast, you'll notice you have these little dots here. What that enables you to do is create rounded corners, which is really kind of cool. Now, this particular video is not going to cover how I can make the top left round. And the, I mean, I'm not talking about that. The purpose of this free example is to share with you, and you're really going to enjoy this, how I can use Illustrator to create my design comps, responsive design, one step at a time. All right, so let's do the Select All, Command A. Anything about a selection is under the Selection menu. Command A for Macintosh, Control A for Windows, and I'm simply going to hit the Delete key. Now here's what I want to do. I'm just gonna pick a putty type of color. Very neutral, this may be brown color. Now notice that my fill color is putty and my stroke is white. I don't wanna have a stroke. Literally and figuratively, I don't wanna have a stroke. I'm gonna hit the X key and I'm gonna hit the forward slash key. So now I have no stroke. Therefore, if I hit the X to exchange key, I can now draw with that putty color. So as best I can, I'm going to draw a rectangle that encompasses the entire page, which was 960 by 520. Now, the reason I said close, because if I'm not exact, what I want to share with you, incidentally, before we go forward, make sure that you're in the Essentials workspace. This way we're on the same page. If you're not in the Essentials workspace, simply reset this back to Essentials. So in the Essentials workspace, I want to go to the Window menu and bring up my Transformation dialog box. Now, the reason I said roughly that size is because I can change it to exactly that size from right here with my Transformation dialog box. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, here's what I want to share with you. Make sure that your registration mark is on the top left-hand corner. Now, the reason... I'm telling you the top left hand corner because that's what we're going to measure from. And if I change that to nine, excuse me, I, I'm drinking some Diet Coke here, so my apologies there. So I have a document, we set up our document, we asked it to be 960 by 560. That basically sits inside of a web design without scrolling up or scrolling down. 960 again is divisible into 768 and also 320. So make sure that this is set up to the top left hand corner, which is it, which it is, 960 by 560. I'm gonna choose right now to lock this into place. Well, if you don't know anything about Illustrator, let me explain how it thinks. Anything you create in Illustrator is an object because it's a vector-based program. As an example, Photoshop is an image-based program. It's pixel-based. Pixels are not scalable. Vectors are scalable. SVG, scalable vector graphic, AI, Adobe Illustrator. So anything about the object is under the object menu. So from the object menu, object lock, object command two, Macintosh control two for Windows. I'm gonna save that for a second. We're gonna, the reason I locked it because I don't want to affect it right now. All right, now I'm gonna share with you a very simple technique of how I can build a golden ratio. So I'm gonna get started by creating a rectangle. But first, I'm just gonna create a color that is different from the color that I have on the stage. This way I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and simply create a rectangle. And I'm just gonna make a small rectangle and hold down the command key and move it to roughly in the center. Now I'm gonna to go to the L key, my ellipse tool. And if I have smart guides on, which you should by default, and if your smart guides are not on, that's under the view menu, seeing is viewing, viewing smart guides, command U, Macintosh, control U for Windows. So here's how we're gonna build our, our golden ratio from scratch. Now, notice that my guides are green, and so perhaps green is not a good color. Let's pick pink. Therefore, I can see the green right there very easily. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna hit the L for ellipse tool, 
hold down the Option key and create an ellipse from the center, holding down the Shift key to create a perfect ellipse. And what I want to do here is knock this into place so it comes right out to the edge. Now, if that goes off the screen, which it looks like it did, I want to basically align this right to the top outside edge right there. Now, if you're not sure again what I'm talking about, let's do this again. I'm just going to make this square a little bit smaller. I could do that by the S for Scale tool, hit the Return key, and let's just scale this down at about 80%. And I'm just doing this so I don't have to scroll up and scroll down on the screen again. L for the Ellipse tool, and I'm going to create an ellipse from the center, holding down the Option key and the Shift key. And we're going to do an ellipse right there. So just as the ellipse touches the outside of the square, that's exactly what I want. Now we're going to change this to a different color, any color than the color I have, so I can see it. And I'm going to arrange the object. Anything about the object is under the object menu. Object arrange, send to back. Command, shift, less than. Now, however, if I send it to the back, it's going to send to the back of the putty color. I don't want to do that. I just want to send it one back word. That's command, left bracket, control, left bracket for Windows. Make a change, save a change. So now I have the tools I need to create a golden ratio. Now the golden ratio is what we talked about to start out the course. In fact, if you go back and look at that web page for a second, in fact, what I suggest you do is go to Google and type in golden ratio. and You'll get more information and detail on exactly what the golden ratio is. Now the golden ratio is based on a formula of 1.618. Now if you're not sure about that, let's write that down, 1.618. So to demonstrate what I've done here is a perfect golden ratio proportion. Now what do I mean by that? Well again I created the rectangle, then from the base of the rectangle I created an oval, which is a circle, perfect circle is an oval, or perfect oval is a circle I should say, and just make sure that that oval's outer edge is touching the square. So basically the distance between point A and point B, I'm going to bring up my rulers for a second and make this a little bit more cohesive. Command R, rulers, control R for windows. I'm going to take a guide and I'm going to drag a guide out to the edge of here. I'm going to take another guide and drag to the edge of the circle. Right there. And I'm drag another guide from point A to point B. Okay, now how the golden ratio thinks and works is that this is 1.68% points the difference between here and here. So what I can actually do if I go to my M4 rectangle tool because R is for rotation, I'm going to create another rectangle and just drag this down right to here. So I don't want to pass the outer edge of the circle. So that's going to give me my perfect golden ratio. And let's just make this a different color. We'll make this red. So who uses golden ratios for web design? Well, a lot of places do. Facebook, the Twitter, the Twitter page. The Twitter page is all set up for the golden ratio. In fact, you can actually take this ratio and put, make a screen capture of Twitter and put it right over on top and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, I don't expect you to take my word to say, well, that's all nice and dandy, Robert, but how do I know that's really 1.68 percentage points of the original square? Well, ye of little faith, watch this. I'm going to hold down the command key because it's going to turn into the direct selection tool. I'm going to drag this down. As I drag it, I hold down the shift key to constrain it and the option key or alt key for Windows. And I'm just going to put that right there. Okay, now I'm going to take this and multiply that 1.68 times. Well, how can I possibly do that? Do I need to get a calculator? Do I need to get out a pen and pencil? No, you can do your math right here. Here's the width. Now keep in mind, I want to measure from the top left hand corner. So I'm going to take this number times 1.618. And if I hit the return key, you'll see exactly right on the money that is exactly the golden ratio of proportions. Okay. Now here's another way I could have done that without having this there. Okay. So in order, I want to create another shape on top of this shape. So how do I do this? Well, first of all, let's just select this and change it to a different color. Let's change it to orange as an example. Then I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. Command C, edit copy. Then I'm going to take the one I just copied and I'm going to paste this in front. Command F, control F for Windows. 
the one that's in front. Now keep in mind I have two copies. I have the one that's in the back and the one that's in front. The one that's in the front I'm just going to change to a different color so I can just visually see what I'm doing. Then I'm just going to take that number again and times 1.618. And that puts it right over on top. Okay. So now what I can do, which is really kind of cool, is I can take this object, send this object to the back. Now, I could have pasted it to the back, but that would put it to the back of this putty. And I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to take the object, anything about the object, based on what I select, anything about the object is under the object menu, object send backwards. So it puts it behind. Now, keep in mind that these are two that these are not separate. This is this green is basically in back of that. And that's probably not what you want to do. But here's what I can do. I'm going to select the green and I'm going to select the orange. And I'm going to go to my Pathfinder. My Pathfinder is part of my line and transformation palette that I got under the window menu, window transform. It's part of that same palette. So I can select this and if I click right here, this is going to divide those shapes. I'm going to click. So right there, I now have a separate graphic. Pretty cool stuff. Now, what does all this mean in the scheme of things? Well, what it means is how I can build a website using the golden ratio. In the next video, I'm going to share with you some really powerful techniques of how I can use Illustrator to slice and dice and create uh, different sections, sidebars, top headers, etc., etc. I can then take that same design that I have, convert it to percentages, because keep in mind our ultimate goal is to build a responsive design website. Right now we're working with pixels, so pixels have no bearing on responsive design because I need to convert them to percentages. So in the next video, we're going to get started creating our grid, but I just wanted to share with you how to create the golden ratio and what the golden ratio represents according to Adobe Illustrator. Talk to you in the next video. Thank you for being here. I will have an incentive for you to sign up for my all-access courses at thinklearnearn.guru. I spent many, many years honing my craft. If you're tired of watching free YouTube videos or tired of no disrespect of going to some premium, I uh, won't mention any names, uh, lynda.com, where it's very long-winded, they never get to the point that they drive yourself insane, then definitely take advantage of my courses. I will talk to you in the next video.